This is the helpful lock picker here, and welcome back to my lock picking homeschool series. The video I have for you today is going over how to plan your approach when you're working on a new lock. What I have in front of us are four very common locks that you can find in the United States with some picks that we're going to use to be able to work on them. The first lock I have is the quick set lock. This is probably the most common residential lock that you can find in the United States. Followed by that is probably the second most common lock, which is the Schlage lock. And then we have a Yale, and then we have an American lock. So. When we're working on these locks, one very important thing to take into account is the keyway. A lot of these keyways can be rather difficult when you're first starting out. The quick set keyway is by far the most open and easily accessible keyway, but as we start moving up here, these keyways can get a little bit more difficult. So one thing I have found is that you always want to plan your approach and study the keyways because sometimes they may be easier than you might think, and I'm going to go into each one of these keyways in more detail. When I'm learning a new lock, what I like to do is remove the plug so I can study the keyway. When the plug is outside the lock, you can get a lot of vital information that you may have not been getting otherwise. When I am learning that keyway, what I like to do is try a variety of different picks and see how each pick is effective or where it is ineffective. When I am learning the keyway, one thing I have found is that the shape of the pick that you use can make a really large difference on how effective it is. Some of these locks that have some difficult warding, you may think initially that you should use a thinner pick like a 15 thousandths pick so you can try to slide past the warding and get access to the pens. I try to use thinner picks as little as possible because I feel like they give less feedback, they bend easily, and they are just not as effective as a thicker pick. I always try to use the thickest pick possible. So you'll be surprised how thick of a pick you can easily get into a keyway if you have one that has the proper shape. And I'll try to get into that with you in just a minute while I'm going through all of these locks individually. The first lock I'm going to start off with is this quick set lock with the KW1 keyway. When you're looking at it, it has a pretty open keyway, and you can probably get any pick in there. What I like to do is always start off with my standard hook in 25 thousandths. That is always my goal, because I open up about 90% of my locks with this. When I look at this keyway, you can see that there's some warning on the bottom here that I'm going to want to avoid. But if I go in from the right side and kind of pick towards the left, there's plenty of room for me to be able to work. What I want to do is make sure my pick is not going to be interfacing with the warding. I do not like it when it scrapes up against that because it will take away a lot of the valuable feedback that you need. If it starts to do that, I will then decide to see if I need to downsize my pick to a slightly thinner one. It may start with a 21 thousandths, then go down to an 18 thousandths. But when I'm trying to test out my approach, what I do is I hold the plug in my hand, I make sure each key pen's pushed down all the way, and then I will start to lift each key pen and just see if I'm able to lift them without really running the risk of oversetting the key pens. And right now it's working reasonably well, and I'm able to get in there pretty easily. If I am not, I will then reassess and see if maybe I would need to use a deeper hook because that can help reach around those high and low key pens. What I'd like to do now is just get a close-up of this keyway for you and I will highlight the area that I like to enter the lock when I am picking it which you'll be able to see mostly on this right side. The next lock I have is the Schleg lock. This is probably one of the more common residential locks you can find in the United States. And also, many of the practice locks that you buy come with this keyway. 
I find this keyway a little bit too difficult for someone that's just starting out because it can be pretty restricted, but it is a very common keyway and an important one to learn. When you're looking at this lock, you can see that this little piece of warding in the middle here will block off your pick. You're going to need a pick that's thinner than 15 thousandths to be able to go up and down through the middle. But what I have found is that if you go in from the left side here, you often have plenty of room to be able to work on the lock. So a 25 thousandths hook works very well for me, but some of these Schleich keyways do come a little bit tighter than other ones, and sometimes I will go down to an 18 thousandths. But when I'm testing my approach, I'm just going to lift up on each key pen, make sure I can lift them individually without really oversetting anything, which I'm being able to do reasonably well right now. So for me, I often use a standard hook in 25 thousandths that can be quite effective. But I will get a close-up of this keyway for you in a second, and I'll show you where I like to have my approach from, but it is typically from this left side going towards the right. The next lock we're going to look at is this Yale-styled lock here. The Yale lock has a little piece of warding that really cuts across the middle here that can be very difficult for people starting out. When I first started, my initial thought always was to pick from the right side because that would provide me with a lot of room to work on. My pick wouldn't be scraping against the warding here. But unfortunately, if you have a lock with difficult bidding, that approach does not always work because you're going to start to overset pens very easily as you're trying to lift up all the key pens. So an alternate approach that I have utilized was when I studied this plug, I noticed that there are holes in the bottom here where the key pens come through. You may not be able to see it in the video, but if you take the plug out yourself in person and look, you'll be able to see it very easily. So this is an example of where the shape of your pick can make a big difference, because I like to take advantage of those holes when I cannot pick from the right side. So you can even get in there with a 25 thousandths pick pretty easily. You just want to make sure that it is a nice and deep hook. So what you do is you go in through the bottom and then you just got to search for each hole and you can lift up each key pen pretty easily without oversetting any of the other key pens. This is an example of where the shape of your pick makes the biggest difference versus the thickness of your pick because a lot of people when they work on Yale's think they need to use a 15 thousandths pick to get in there. But you're always welcome to try to use a 15 thousandths pick if you would like. It really just is not my preference. But you just always want to study your plug and really try to see if there's anything that you can exploit to use in your favor. I'd like to give you a close-up of this keyway so you can see exactly where I'm going in. So you can see how it has this zigzag kind of shape here. When I'm using my deeper hook, I go in below that piece of warding right here, and I start to lift each of the key pens. And I'm going to get you a close-up of this so you can see, but typically I go in right down here. But if you're going to try to rake the lock open with, say, a Bogota style rake, I pretty much always do go in through the top part here, which I will specify in the close-ups. The final lock we're going to work on today is this American lock. This is one of my favorite locks to work on. A lot of people have had a lot of success with different picks when they are opening these locks. I've seen people use up to 30 thousandths of an inch thick. The problem with using the thicker picks is you typically have to start picking from the left side here, which can make oversetting a lot more of a problem because you won't be able to have the full access. You can get a 25 thousandths pick through the middle here pretty often, 
but it starts to scrape against the warding very easily, which takes away a lot of the fine control and the feedback. What I have found with American locks is you can have access to the entire keyway if you use an 18,000s hook. What I like about the 18,000s hook is it's thin enough but strong enough for you to be able to get some good feedback still. So with this you can go down the midline of the keyway here and be able to work on each key pin and really not have to worry too much about oversetting because you can individually manipulate each key pin pretty easily without there being much of a difficulty. With these picks though, you just got to be very careful because the thinner you get, the more likely that they will be able to bend. But with the American locks, I do like to use an 18 thousandths because you can go through the midline. And I'll get a close up of, you, of this for you in a second here so you can see exactly where I like to go and when I am working on these locks. In summary, when you're learning a new keyway, you always want to take the plugs out and see if you can start to study them and see what's going to be the most logical approach for you to take. A lot of the keyways offer some difficulty with the warding and it can really get in the way and make it more difficult to get access to the key pins or you may have to overset key pins more easily. But you can really start to take advantages of certain aspects of the keyway if you start to study them. For example, on the Yale, this is the one that has the holes in the bottom of the warding here. So you can get full access to all of them by going through the bottom if you use a deeper hook. That makes it so easy to set these pins that you'll never need to really worry about key bidding because you can hit each pin individually without interfacing with anything else. Also, you can take into consideration the thickness of the pick you use because on an American lock, using something as simple as an 18,000s pick can give you full access to the keyway. A lot of these locks just take time to learn my biggest advice for you to do is when you are learning a lock with a new keyway is to try to pick multiple locks with the same keyway. When I first started learning American locks, I bought a lot of American locks and just kept picking them until I got very confident with the keyway. Just because you've picked a lock once with one particular keyway does not mean that you have necessarily mastered it. But with everything else in life, Practice, practice, practice. That is going to be the biggest thing that will help you get better. But you can have all these tools in your arsenal to help you get better, such as studying the lock, really learning what's going on, planning your approach, and just keeping practicing. Either way, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you all have a great day.